Hello, how are you? Welcome back to another Worst to Best. Today's subject, actually today's band, Porcupine Tree. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Porcupine Tree, they are a progressive metal slash rock band from 1990s. Uh, they started in the 90s. It was mainly just uh, the lead singer, guitarist, etc., uh, Steve, Stephen Wilson, and, um, you got Colin Edwin, and, uh, Chris Maitland, and Richard Burberry, so, it turned into a, this bigger group, instead of it just being him with, um, uh, you know, uh, just him, guitar, bass, and a drum machine, which in all honesty was, <laughs> Let's not get into it just now, because this is the worst to best of Porcupine Tree. And I have my list. All 13 albums. Now, I know what you're thinking. They don't have 13 albums. What are you on? What kind of crack are you smoking? And I promise you, I'm not smoking any crack at all. Anyways, I included their EPs to make it a little bit more interesting. Things like Neil Recurring, uh, Recordings... And, um, Voyage 34 are all in here. So, um, you know, I, I, I wanted to include some of their official stuff. So, let's uh, get into it with number 13. On the Sunday of Life, released in 1991. Okay, it's no real surprise that this album is where it is. This album is still good, but it is very, very amateurish, poorly recorded, and it just has that very bad drum machine. Um, I thought that the songs didn't really do anything for me. They didn't hit me hard enough to put it... None of them actually hit me hard enough to uh, bring it up anywhere, and um, it just... It, it, I couldn't put it anywhere but the bottom. Uh, it, it is their debut, so it's not super shocking that this is at the bottom, but the weak chord progressions, drum track, ba bad drum tracks at that, uh, poor recording quality, and so forth. Um, I don't really have a favorite track on this album. None of the songs on this album really captured me. Uh, there was no compelling chord progressions, and it just sounded like very unoriginal space rock. So let's move on to number 12. No Recurring, released in 2008. The EP that came out sometime after uh, Fear of a Blank Planet. This is an EP, so I had to have it near the bottom because of that. But even though it is an EP, it's still better than their debut. With the revision of uh, Sentimental being normal... Uh, that provided another way of listening to a favorite on fear, Sentimental. Uh, the rest of this EP just uh, are just cuts from the album Fear. Um, still really good. And this EP does deserve some praise. Even though this is the weakest, even though um, the weakest song on the album is probably Cheating the Polygraph, um, I just didn't find that that song really captured me and it didn't have an interesting chord progression. The time signature was weird and... Well, I mean, the time signature was really cool, but... It didn't grab me. It didn't have an interesting chord progression. The atmosphere was a little weak and so forth. But it's, it's still really good. And uh, this is pretty much where it goes up from here. So, uh, number 11. Voyage 34, The Complete Trip, released in 1995, really released in 2000 and, 2000, and then re-released again. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this one is interesting. For, uh, it's, for the most part, it's an instrumental. So, uh, <laughs> okay. This is, this one has always, this one has always been weird for me. It says that it's a compilation, but I'm not sure it is. 
I, I can't tell anymore. It's so confusing. No matter what I do. I can't think of anything what it is. I can't. Oh, I have no idea what to say about this album. Other than the material found on this album is really, really cool. It sounds a lot like uh, stuff on, um, you know, their previous albums. Like, uh, uh, what was that? Um, Up the Downstair. It sounds like that kind of stuff. It's really well done. Even though it's... At the bottom, it's still pretty damn good. Number 10. Light Bulb Sun, released in 2000. Okay, this is the alternative uh, prog rock album with a bunch of heat coming off the back of Stupid Dream. This album is weak, but yet super good in its own way. Uh, the only reason for this album being so low is the sheer lack of compelling chord progressions on half of the album. A few are trying too hard to be hit singles, and uh, there was no real solid atmosphere on this album. Uh, thankfully, it, it did borrow from the previous album, Stupid Dream. Uh, things that it borrowed were harmonies and short, short moody uh, songs. My favorite tracks on this album are the title track, Light Bulb Sun, uh, How Is Your Life Today, because those harmonies are unbelievable, Where We Would Be, Same Reason, and Russia On Ice, because of the, uh, it's a really good epic by the band, and I feel like it deserves some praise. But, um, uh, I just feel like uh, those uh, four tracks are very underrated. Where We Would Be is incredible. How Is Your Life Today? Great short with really great mood and amazing harmonies. And uh, the title track and Rush On Ice, both fantastic. Great chord progressions, good mood, and amazing lyrics. So let's move on to number nine. Up The Downstair, released in 1993. Up the Downstair, woohoo! A great album with some amazing space rock atmospheres. Interesting chord progressions and plenty of other things that make this album great. Uh, the lyrics and effects on this album were really well done for what they attempted to do. I'm glad I picked up the remaster because I do not want to hear this album with a drum track rather than... Uh, I, will, I want to hear Gavin Harrison uh, drum these songs because what Gavin did on the drums for this album was incredible and I'm going to praise him for it it was really well done Gavin well done love your work um, uh, so um, the songwriting on this album is amateurish but good but once again I'm I'm, I'm really just glad that we have a uh, Gavin to thank for not having to listen to that damn drum machine. It was bad on uh, on the Sunday of Life, and I just can't do it again. Um, I didn't have a real favorite song on the album other than maybe the title track of The Downstair, which was the long 10-minute piece. It was either 10 or 11 minutes. I can't remember exactly, but there was a lot of really cool guitar pieces, really well-done chord progressions, and... Great soundscapes. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, and uh, it, it, it was just a space rock masterpiece. So, number eight. Fear of a Blank Planet, released in 2007. Now I know I'm going to get killed for this. This is the concept album that was pr voted Prague's album of 2007. Jesus, people are going to annihilate me for this, but it does have some qualities that um, I can see why it would it would be 2007's prog album, such as epics, the the chord changes throughout, and uh, the chord progressions, mood, etc. But its biggest problem that is that it's under Roadrunner, and yes, I do love Roadrunner for certain reasons. Um, but Porcupine Tree made a mistake of signing themselves to Roadrunner. This, uh, the band was put in a very uncomfortable and heavy place. The band, uh, had never explored techniques like blast beats, extreme heavy parts, 
And all of those things can be found on anesthetize. Um, one of Porcupine Tree's weakest, yet still so good on its own, uh, on its uh, in its own way. Uh, the rest of the album has its own quality and atmosphere, and so on. But overall, this album is just slightly boring, with some impressive and great moments. My favorite tracks on this are the uh, title track, uh, "Way Out of Here" and "Sleep Together." Those ones are the uh, great, brilliant, atmospheric uh, bits. Great, brilliant. <laughs> and it just has a great atmosphere, dark dynamic, and I absolutely adore that I absolutely adore on this album. So let's move on. Number seven. The Sky Moves Sideways and released in 1995. A very Floyd-esque album with a lot of great moments. It has some amazing atmospheres um, and some really well-written songs. It is on the simple side, but the lyrics, vocals, and such play a very big part on this album. Um, it is an earlier release, so it has some issues that uh, like the amateurish quality of the album. It still has a bunch of great moments. Uh, the beginning of uh, S- The Sky Moves Sideways, the big uh, um, epic on the album, is an amazing atmospheric piece that takes you to so many places unimaginable. Holy crap, you feel like you're tripping throughout that entire song. Um, there wasn't a bad song on this album, actually. Just plenty of great tracks. Every song on this album was equal to me. So, number six. I still Recordings released in 2001. This is a compilation album. I'm I I'm 100% um, aware of that. Um, even though I don't really want to call it that, it has some of the best unheard content by the band. From stuff, uh, it, it's mainly just demos from uh, Light Bulb Sun, Stupid Dream, etc. The mood on this. On most of the songs found on this album is some of the best, uh, <laughs> some of the best I've ever heard. Um, buying Buying New Soul is a brilliant ten minute song with a uh, great chord progression, perfect atmosphere, and wonderful harmonies. Cure for Optimism is a dark, eh, is a is a dark and mood song with a grabbing chord progression. I keep on saying chord progressions, but it's really it's 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 the grabbing factor in a song haunting intro and so on and of course let's not forget the extended cut of even less off stupid dream and even less has always been one of my favorite songs off stupid dream just because of the sheer concept of that album and the way that they opened up with a heavy great um intro to a great album so number five Dead Wing released in 2005. I know I'm gonna get flack for this one too because people love this album as well. It was rated, it was um, voted in the prog album of 2005. And it's another amazing concept album by the progressive rock metal legends Porcupine Tree. The opening track is a solid and very heavy track with a huge dynamic. Thank you, Michael Ackerfeld. <laughs> um, of course, the rest of the album has a bunch of dynamic and plenty of complicated and heavy bits. There were a few things that could be improvements on the album. The biggest problem with this album being the ending, glass arm shattering. I love the album, but they did not. It, it was an 11 minute song that really ended at around the six and a half minute, um, uh, the six and a half minute mark. Uh, it, just like my complaint with Deliverance by Opeth, uh, the album had a very poor ending. Um, my favorite songs on this album have to be uh, Melot- everything from the title track to Mellotron Scratch, then the start of Something Beautiful. I love Open Car, but it doesn't hold a candle to the best songs on this album, mainly because of the chord progressions, you know, etc., etc. Um, 
in Glass Arm Shattering was just a bad way to end the album. It was both a good and bad way because it um it it was cut off way too late. There was just 11 minutes of silence. It was just a bad way of ending it. Unless you had the domestic version or edition because then you would have the 2005 re-recording of She Moved On. She's moved on and I love that song. Oh, man. That's a great one. Um, I love Glass Arm Shattering, but seriously, it needed to be cut as soon as it ended. Number four. Stupid Dream, released in 1999. The alternative rock prog rock album that... Ended the 1900s. And a, and a genius album to end the uh, century off with. Two gems that came out of that year were um, Flower Power by the Flower Kings and this one. Now the greatest strength about this album is the amazing harmonies and well-written songs. Stephen Wilson really hit the nail on the head with this album. The harmonies are perfect, the songwriting is spectacular, and the chord progressions are of Stephen Wilson heaven. Um, as much as this album does take the alt-rock approach, it's still brilliant, and I think that it works in this album's advantage to a great length. They moved on from that space rock sound with Signify to a more upbeat and harmony-based approach that's found on this album. Uh, songs like uh, uh, Piano Lessons, Pure Narcotic, Even Less, and Stranger by the Minute are some, are some of my favorite tracks off this album. With the weakest song probably being the title track, it's an interlude uh, that feels like a reprisal of the opening track. And it just seems um, uninventive and nothing we haven't heard before on this album. And to be honest, nothing that should have been repeated. So, Still a great album. I praise this album for its harmonies and its well-written songs. So, well done, Stephen. You made a great album. Number three. Signify, released in 1996. Uh, yes, Signify, the one album that I just talked about in the previous, uh, in the, in the Stupid Dream. The space rock sound actually ended up being the one that worked a tad more for me. That's the weirdest thing. Um, it's, this is a very underappreciated album by the band. And, uh, even though I absolutely adore this album... This album has a solid atmosphere, great harmonies, and oddly has some Crosby, Stills, and Nash uh, type influences. Um, I absolutely love this album. It's criminally underrated. My favorite tracks would have to be the title track, Sleep of No Dreaming, Pagan, Waiting, the entire, both parts. Sever, Every Home Was Wired, and Light Mass Prayers. What Chris Maitland did on uh, Light Mass Prayers, I have to praise him for that. That is expertly done. And that is probably the best atmosphere I have heard by the band in my entire life. It's so good. Yeah, maybe second best. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, everything else on this on this album is either good or great, but nothing is as good as the best songs on this album. So, um, number two. The Incident, released in 2009. The other criminally underrated album, The Incident. A brilliant release by the band and the final album to have been released. This album takes advantage of that uncomfortable situation and the uncom uh, that they found themselves in with uh, the previous album of Fear of a Blank Planet uh, and manipulated that uncomfortable songwriting by making an amazing album uh, that closes the band's uh, discography. The atmosphere on this album is absolutely incredible. The heavy bits fit. And everything on this album works perfectly with a lot of really obvious, um, you know, um, inspirations by Pink Floyd. Animals! Let's not get too far into it! Uh, (laughs) 
This album doesn't have a single bad song on it. Every song is amazing, of course. It's not their best album, but nothing can really beat number one for me. In Absentia, released in 2002. Ah, uh, yes. Their album that was first to be released under a new and unfamiliar record label called Lava. This album really works. Perfect songwriting, great instrumentations, great instrumentals, well-written acoustic songs, and great heavy pieces with, again, amazing harmonies. Stephen Wilson's a genius when it comes to harmonies, and I don't know how he does it. Uh, this album just works. It is... It's the it's it's amazing. It's it's great. I have nothing more to say about it. There's not one bad song on this album. Um, every song on this album is absolutely gold. Uh, the time signatures, the concept, the mood, the influences leaking out and becoming obvious. Crosby, Stills and Nash again. Um, this album is dripping with prog goodness. And this is my favorite album by the band. It's just an incredible release, and I can't wait to receive my deluxe edition next month. Yeah, I bought the deluxe edition. Yes, I'm going to do a review on it. You know why? Because I can. And I'm going to love it because it's the 2017 remaster. It has a new mix. It has demos, and it has... Oh, man, I'm going to love it. So... Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this and agree with my list, leave a like. Uh, comment below. Tell me what your list is, etc., uh, etc. Et but thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.